Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Don for Sioux Falls Southern Hills Church here in the upper Midwest and the Dakotas. I want to thank you for worshiping with us today, for being part of our online worship service. I, I want you to know that, um, that we're not just watching church. We are worshiping Jesus in this online format. And I am so thankful that we have the technology to do so. So thank you, friends, for being part of our online worship, uh, worship format experience. I want to go through a couple announcements before I continue on with uh, worship this morning. Today is Sunday, November 8th, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on in our world, but one thing we do know is that Jesus, uh, he, he still loves us. And uh, he, he's our focus, right? Um, he's our focus. Now, Charge Conference is coming up next Sunday, and I have some great news for those of you who use this 930 format to worship Jesus. Our new district superintendent, Rebecca Trevs, she will be uh, preaching, and you will be able to hear her sermon through this format if you're not able to join us on Facebook Live. At the 10.30 service after, wor after worship at about 11.35, we will start our charge conference. Now, if you don't have Facebook, if you don't have an account, you can still log on to Facebook and find our church and see and be part of our charge conference uh, on Facebook Live. If you need to experiment with it during the week, let me know. I'd be happy to, to help you figure that out. So that is happening uh, next Sunday, uh, uh, November 15th. Friends, hanging of the green, hanging of the greens for uh, uh, the Advent season will happen right after church on November 22nd. It, it is just crazy how fast November goes, right? And then the first Sunday of Advent is November 29th. Uh, we'll be, we will be looking for readers uh, in this online format and uh, live in person for inside the church as well. So if, um, if that's something that uh, God might be putting on your heart for you to read, you don't have to write anything. I will have everything ready to go for you. Um, I would like to make that happen for you and your family. Uh, continue to send in your offerings to the church. You can, you can mail them in or drop them off, or you can download the Southern Hills Give Plus app and continue to uh, use that uh, for your giving. Thank you, friends, for worshiping with us today. Have a fantastic Sunday. God bless. Bye. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my the king who conquered the 
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Don here. I'm pastor at Southern Hills Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I am honored that you are worshiping with us on our online-only recorded service for this Sunday, November 8th. It is a fantastic day to come together and worship with the Lord, with our friends and family, whoever you may be worshiping with. If you're by yourself, may you know that you're loved by Jesus. If you're with your family, family, you are loved by Jesus. The fall is well underway here in the upper Midwest. West. The, the weather is, is getting colder. This past week, I don't know what it was, it was a, another snapshot of how beautiful the upper Midwest can be. Um, we, we had shorts on, we had t-shirts on, but this week ahead it's going to get cold. T-shirts, shorts are going to be packed away, long sleeves, sweatpants, uh, jeans, whatever you call them, they're going to be the norm for the next six months. Till about mid-May, unfortunately. That's just the nature of living here in the upper Midwest. Six months down the road is a long time from now. And in just a few moments, I'm going to challenge you to do something that is life-changing over the next six months. But before we get there, I'm going to talk about an invitation. When I was in first grade, I received, I remember receiving my first invitation, a birthday party invitation in the mail. I was invited to go to Brian Walter's pool party. It was, at the, it was going to be at the YMCA in downtown Westchester, Pennsylvania. It was an indoor pool party, and I was so excited to go. Up to this point, my parents, they had me in, in swimming lessons from the time I was three years old to, to where I was in, in kindergarten and, and first grade. And, and, and even after this pool party, I still took swimming lessons. They were important to me, and I, I had a blast learning how to swim. Right when I found found out that Brian Walter's party was going to be a pool party. I was excited. I was, I was stoked because at that point I was good enough to swim in the deep end by myself. That party, church, <laughs> it was one of those parties that I will never forget because it should never have been a pool party. Poor Brian Walters, he, he didn't know how to swim and his parents were throwing him a pool party. I remember watching him hold on for dear life, inching himself. Do you ever see this? When you're in an indoor swimming pool, people inch themselves along the wall. Brian Walters was inching himself along the wall so he could swim with his friends out in the deep end. I don't know at that time if I felt bad for Brian, but looking back now, I wondered what in the world were his parents thinking, throwing their son a pool party for a kid who couldn't swim past the waist? past his own waistline. I know I had a blast, and I couldn't wait to invite Brian and all my friends to my birthday party. When second grade came around, uh, when, when second grade came around, my parents wanted to throw me a costume party. It, it was in September, it was the fall, and I, I remember watching my mom write out all these invitations to all these kids in my second grade class. At that time, Daffy Duck was my favorite cartoon character, and my mom, what she did, oh, she's so fantastic at this, by the way. She had, uh, she had, she handmade a Daffy Duck costume complete with orange legs, orange flippers, or, or feet, and a great big orange beak. It was so cool looking. That costume, it was amazing. I wore it later that, uh, that fall for Halloween in October. At that party, I invited my whole second grade class from Mrs. Crowlinger's at Mary C. House in Westchester. Early on in second grade, specifically that year, I developed a crush. <laughs> I developed a crush on, on one of the cute girls from my class. Her name was Sarah Winters, and she came to my costume birthday party. She came wearing the most adorable Minnie Mouse costume you could ever imagine. My mom somehow embarrassed myself, em embarrassed me by taking a picture of, of Sarah and I talking underneath a tree in our front yard. I still have this picture. This, this was the era when you took pictures on those instant Polaroid uh, cameras, the ones that, that I spoke about two weeks ago, if, if you remember that, that. It's the camera that looks like a, a small DVD player with a flash on it. My mom, she took pictures upon pictures from this birthday party that she still has today. And all the kids in my class came, friends, because of a simple invitation. Invitations are, are special, aren't they? 
When you receive one in the mail, especially as a kid, you, it, it creates so much excitement and expectancy about what the party or event is going to be like. An invitation, it also makes you feel loved and cared for, right? You don't give an invitation to someone if you don't care for them. As we wrap up this series today called The Doorbell, we're going to talk about how it's our turn. It's your turn to ring the bell. And today, we're going to get deep. We're going to get deep in God's Word. We're going to get deep in our faith. We're going to ask some hard questions. And one of them, actually a bunch of them are right now. What if, what if we made a commitment, church? What if we made a commitment from now until May to invite one person to church every single week for the next six months? What, can you imagine, friends, what, what it would look like if, if we made that commitment together? An invitation, church, it may be the very thing your neighbor needs right now. An invitation could be the very thing your son or daughter needs that, that may have fallen away from church or, or might be searching for a church. You and I, every single day, we have an opportunity that Jesus gives us to share him through a simple invitation. A simple invitation that could change someone's life forever. As you and I turn to the scriptures here in just a moment, as we read them, I, I, I might... Actually, I, I, I may not ask this question. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I, I want you to think about. I want you to think about how God might use you as you answer the doorbell and as you go ring the doorbell. Today, we're going to be hanging out in the book of Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Would you join me as we read this uh, last text out of the book of Matthew? You can find it on the screen, or if you want to follow along, I'll be reading it here in just a moment. The scripture says this. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Therefore go and make disciples. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. This scripture, friends, it, it always amazes me and it frustrates me at the same time. The 11 disciples, the 11 people that Jesus poured himself into, the 11 people that heard Jesus foretell everything that was going to happen before and after the crucifixion, before for uh, the ascension into heaven, the 11 people that went into hiding when Jesus was dying on the cross, the 11 people that saw Jesus for 40 days after, after the resurrection, right? Before he ascended into heaven, the 11 people that Jesus never gave up on because he loved so much like he loves you and I so much. On this mountaintop, we read in our scripture that some doubted. As I'm reading this, I have some questions, and maybe you do too. I wonder, I wonder, how do you, how do you follow Jesus? How do you follow the, the Savior of the world? How do you follow Jesus for, for three years Watch Jesus do all the miracles, all the healings, all the, all the preaching. You hear him preach countless sermons. You see him save people's lives. You hear, you hear, you hear about him. You see him restore people from, from demonic spirits inside them. And, and, you, and he, he brought back Lazarus from the dead. Huh, right? Remember that story? And people have come to know Jesus. And now he, he, he is with you. How do you doubt, right? How, how did some doubt when Thomas, do you remember that story? Thomas, he said this, unless I put my hands in the side where he is pierced, where he was pierced, I will still not believe. Thomas did that, right? The disciples saw that. 
And it amazes me on the top of this mountain that some are still doubting. Doubting the one that gives life. Personally, I didn't know Jesus until I was 16 years old. Looking back to elementary school, especially fourth grade, I wish I would have known him like I know Jesus now. Fourth grade, it was my second year of tackle football. And just like everything, just like in everything we do, right, especially if we have kids in activities, uh, whether it's sports or extracurricular activities, the arts, whatever it may be, there is always a fundraiser, right? We're always raising money for something. Parents love fundraisers, by the way, right? That year... That year, my fourth grade year, that year, if you sold 50 New York style cheesecakes, you would, be refor- you would be awarded a really, really cool football jacket. Once I found out a jacket was in the mix, I was determined to reach that 50 mark. That fall, I became a door-to-door salesman. The doorbell, just like you and I have been talking about over the last four weeks, it became my best friend. I knew from all the people that tried to sell my parents stuff, the two worst times to go door to door were right during supper and right when mom and dad get home from work. I remember my folks getting so upset when the doorbell would ring during supper. My dad, he would be steamed. He would get up from his seat, walk to the door, right, where this person was ringing the bell, and he wouldn't even let them open their mouths. He would say, we're in the middle of supper. I'm not interested. Goodbye. (laughs) right? Because of my own family's experiences, I knew the best time to sell cheesecakes was to go right after supper, up and right about seven o'clock at night until dark, or on Saturday mornings or Sunday after church when people were in a good mood. That was the best time to go and sell a cheesecake. To be a good salesman, right? You have to put on the charm. You have to make sure you're polite, Nobody's going to buy anything from anybody if you're not polite. You tell the people what you're selling, why you're selling it, and you never look down. You look them in the eye. Well, church, that fall, I became the best cheesecake salesman, sales boy, if you will, sales kid, in all of eastern Pennsylvania. I not only sold 50 cheesecakes, I, sold, I reached the 75 mark. I sold 75 cheesecakes to neighbors in my neighborhood. And still to this day, if you want the best tasting New York cheesecake, come talk to me and this is what I will do. I will send you down to Omaha or Kansas City to the Cheesecake Factory. There you will find the best tasting New York style cheesecake. That fall in fourth grade, selling cheesecakes was was all I was concerned about. For every house that said yes, two would say no. You had to be persistent you, because it would be so easy to give up each time you were told no, right? I mean, just like in life, if we're told no, it, it can discourage us, but we have to be persistent. I wish in, in that point of my life as a fourth grade kid, I, I wish I knew I had the opportunity to share Jesus with each cheesecake I sold. If Jesus would have reigned in my life like he does now, I would have said, thanks, and God bless, and and, and God bless you and your family. And I want you to know, Jesus loves you with each cheesecake I sold. I don't know, as a fourth grade kid, if I actually would have had enough courage to do that. But what I do know is this. Friends, we have to make the most of every opportunity that we get. When we read this passage today, we can do two things. We can become two people. We can say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to tell people about you. I want the world to know how important you are to me. Or we can say this, well, I just read that. I've heard this before. Somebody else can do all this stuff. Somebody else can go tell people about Jesus. There's there's enough people in the church. There's enough Christians in the world so I don't have to be uncomfortable telling people about Jesus. Sometimes we even tell ourselves, well, isn't that the pastor's job to do? Isn't that Pastor Don's job to do? All that Jesus stuff, all this this church stuff, that's his job. It's not my job. Following Jesus, church, 
It is the most rewarding and fulfilling decision you will ever make in your life. Right now, I, I, I want you to think with me. I want you to think about the last person you invited to church. What, when was it? What did they say? If they said no, did, did they leave you discouraged? Did you feel hurt? Because, because if, they, if, they, if they said, you know, I don't believe in all that Jesus church stuff. It's one big joke. I, I, I just don't see the point. Did they say the church has, has never done anything for me, so I don't, see the, I don't see why I have to go? Now think about this, church. You and I, we work hard, right? We work hard in every area of our life. We work hard in our jobs. We work hard in our retirement. We work hard in, in, in when we're, our kids are in school, right? We work hard as parents making sure our, our kids have everything they need to thrive. We work hard to keep our home looking nice. We work hard saving for vacations and, and retirement. We work hard at sports. We work hard in the arts. We work hard at being a good parent, being a good friend, being a good spouse. Now, if we are honest, what would it look like if we worked as hard in all these other areas of our life the same? same way, the same way when it comes to sharing Jesus in this world? What if we work just as hard as we did in every other area of our life when it comes to sharing Jesus? That's tugging on my heart this morning. When I was selling cheesecakes, friends, I had so much passion. I was good at it. I had so much passion because I knew, I knew I was going to be rewarded with, with a pretty amazing jacket that I would only wear for a year because I outgrew it, right? <laughs> when we tell people about Jesus and invite them to church, you and I, we already know what the prize is. We already know what our reward is in heaven, eternity forever. And because of our gift of salvation, that, friends, it needs to drive you and I every single day to reach out and share Jesus everywhere we go. Friends, I have been told no. I've been told no so many times. It would think, you would think, that that word alone would stop me from telling people about Jesus and inviting people to church. But the, reality is, but the reality is, when somebody says no, someone else is going to say yes. And what that yes does, it makes all the people that say no to your face, and they will. It makes all the people, what this yes does, it makes all the people that say no to your face seem like they never happen because of what a yes can do. Jesus says this. In this world, you will have trouble. Friends, that, that's a given, right? I mean, we know that we're going to have trouble. We know that we're going to have heartache. We know that we're going to have trials. We know that, that things aren't always going to go our way. But, but then Jesus says at the end of that scripture, take heart, I have overcome the world. Maybe, maybe you're watching this service today and, and you're worshiping along with us. And you're like, Pastor, all this... <coughs> All this sounds wonderful. All this sounds great. I believe in the power of Jesus and his ministry in me and, and how he calls me to serve in the local church. But I just, I can't, I can't get enough courage. I'm afraid. I can't get enough courage to tell someone about Jesus or invite someone to church. And maybe this morning that's you. Maybe that's where you're at. And if it is, I want you to hear these words. In the book of Joshua, God says, Have I not commanded you? And maybe you know this scripture. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Do you believe that, church? I'm going to read that again. 
Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Do you believe that, church? If you believe that the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go, that he commands us to be strong and courageous, to not be afraid. If you believe that, I want you to claim that right now with your life. Be strong and courageous. God is with you. He loves you. He gives you strength. He gives you words to use. He gives us Jesus, who is the answer for everything. During Jesus' ministry, not everyone who heard Jesus speak and preach and, and do all the miracles believed. Not everybody believed and followed him. Some people were so stuck on tradition and the way things were, they didn't see right in front of them that he was their savior. And in fact, they, they thought that they were still waiting. Some didn't want to believe that the savior of the world was right in front of them. Some people wanted him, wanted him dead. Some people uh, disregarded everything that he had to say. But church, hear this. The ones that followed, the ones that, that trusted Jesus, the ones that gave Jesus their hearts, they are the ones, they're the ones that told others about him. People like Paul that you and I read about in the New Testament who followed Jesus at the point, at, at, at the point of death time and time again. Paul, he preached to the churches. He, he preached to the world so that others don't have to wonder what happens when they breathe their last breath. This, this Jesus movement, the, the Jesus movement that we read about in the Gospels, it still is one of the most powerful movements in the world today. And friends, we have an opportunity right now, right now as we speak, in this church neighborhood, within a one to two mile radius, there are thousands of people waiting for Southern Hills. They are waiting for their doorbell to be rang. We can't think anymore that the people are going to come to the church. We have to go to where people are. They're waiting for you to ring their doorbell, not during supper when mom and dad get home, but they are waiting for you. They are waiting, to, they are waiting for you, the church, to start a relationship, to start a friendship, to tell them that they are cared for. They are waiting, church, for you to ask them if there's anything that you can be a prayer warrior for them and their family. They are waiting for you, church, to ring their bell and to listen to listen to someone vent their frustrations, because that will happen. To listen to someone tell you about their bad experience, and for you to say, you know what, I'm sorry you had a bad experience in the church before, but Southern Hills isn't like that. Friends, here's the reality. Here's the reality of our lives, right? We are in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, it, it, this COVID virus, um, it, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Case counts are on the rise every day, but here's the thing. In the midst of this global pandemic, we, we don't stop following Jesus. Some people may not want to come inside the church to in-person worship. Some people may not want to come inside until there's a vaccine or until case counts decrease drastically. So what if, what if we invite people to church and if they're not comfortable coming inside, what if you invite them to be part of our online church services like the one you're watching now or our Facebook live service that streams at 8.30 and 10.30? As a people, we give excuses for a lot of things, right? COVID is not an excuse it's a reality, but it's not an excuse. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to reach out to people. There are people right now in deep isolation who have not ventured outside their homes since last March. Maybe due to a, a lot of health issues that, that if they got this virus, it would not be good for them. And even if people don't want to leave their homes, they, I believe they are craving they are craving some kind of normalcy, some kind of interaction. And maybe you ringing their doorbell, inviting them to be part of our online service is the thing they need.
What if we reach out to someone and just say, hey, come join us. Come join us online. For those of you right now who are, who are worshiping, not watching, because there's a difference. For those of you who are worshiping online right now, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you because I want you to know that you are the church. You're the church. You're worshiping online too. You can still feel community. I pray you will know how much you are loved, not only by me, but God and this church family. And I'm so thankful that we have an opportunity to, to stream these services each and every week for those that, that worship online, for those that, that, that need this on Sunday mornings. Thank you. Thank you for being Jesus to me and for being Jesus to others as we worship him online like we're doing right now. Everyone, friends, Everyone who joins us online and in person, you are so important. I want you to know that. Friends, we can, we can, still, we can still worship, right? Whether it's online or in person. And I want you to know people outside these walls, people are waiting. Huh. There's so much uncertainty in the world right now. But let's, let's give people something that they can be certain about. And that's something good. People are waiting in the midst of this crazy time in the world that is in right now. People are waiting for something good. <laughs> Maybe it's an invitation. Maybe inviting someone to worship online. Maybe that's the invitation they need right now. They're waiting for people, that there are people waiting for an invitation that could change their life forever. Friends, this, this message today, it's not only for you and I, it's for you and I to tell others about Jesus, to get excited, to tell others about him. It's not for us to give an excuse and say, someone else will do it, that the church has enough people so I don't have to do this. Uh, friends, it doesn't matter who we are. We are called to follow Jesus the same. We are called to tell people about Jesus the same. We're called to reach out to others the same. We're not called to say somebody else will do it. Or that's uncomfortable for me. There are ways we can share Jesus, right? Where we don't have to be uncomfortable. Do you remember what God says? Be courageous. Be strong. And know that I am with you wherever you go. Friends, in our lives, we, we do give a lot of excuses. And the evil one, he, he feeds into them. But I want you to know God gives you strength all the time. And I want you to feed into God's strength this week. When people say no, and they will, someone is going to say yes. Someone is going to say yes, and that will change their life forever. Church, I want you to know Jesus loves you. He is with you wherever you go. God bless, and have a wonderful day. And as you have a wonderful day, wherever you may be right now, I just I want to ask you one last question. If you felt God tugging on your heart today during our online worship service, I want you to reach out and invite someone to church every week for the next six months. Friends, we're talking about eternity here. Eternity is something a lot of people don't know about. Go. Go. Jesus says go. Go and tell the world. Tell the world about him. Amen and amen.